conflicts are the mainstay of biological systems. A key type of weaponry that's used in conflicts between genomes is a group of enzymes known as restriction endonucleases. When these weapons are deployed, it's critical that the deployer has a means of self versus non-self recognition. This discrimination is achieved by means of enzymes which add tags to bases in DNA. We have a whole range of bases which are tagged with such modifications ranging from the small methyl group all the way to entire amino acids or polyamines. Studies in eukaryotes have recognized at least two types of DNA methylation. One, the modification of cytosine at the phi position of the pyrimidine ring. And second, the modification of adenine at the exocyclic NH2 group at the 6th position. Cytosine modification has been extensively studied in eukaryotes. However, adenine modification, while known for over 40 years, has not received the same attention. Recently, three independent studies have brought adenine modification to the fore. These studies show that adenine modification is widely distributed in eukaryotes. One of these studies on the nematode worm C. elegans has shown that adenine modification increases transgenerationally in worms lacking the histone demethylase related to LSD1. This histone demethylase removes methyl marks from the fourth lysine in histone H3. The second study has shown that transcriptionally active transposons in Drosophila early in development are marked with a similar methylation of adenine at the sixth position. A third study in a more distantly related organism, Chlamydomonas, has shown that adenine methylation is correlated with transcriptionally active chromatin. Thus, there is evidence that like cytosine methylation, adenine methylation might also play a role as an epigenetic mark. Is there adenine methylation in vertebrates like ourselves? Humans do have a gene which is an orthologue of damped 1 or metal 4 which is implicated in DNA methylation in the nematodes. So in principle we might have adenine methylation. While these studies are still in their infancy, it's becoming clear that adenine methylation is unlikely to play the same role as cytosine methylation in eukaryotes. Cytosine methylation has been consistently associated with repressed or transcriptionally less active chromatin. In contrast, adenine methylation, at least from the preliminary evidence, seems to be associated with chromatin undergoing active transcription, although not under the same conditions or the same genomic locations in the different model systems which are being considered to date. Adenine methylation is not a static modification. We had earlier shown that a group of iron and 2-oxoglutarate dependent dioxygenases known as the ALK-B family is responsible for reversal of alkyl marks which are added by DNA damaging agents. It has now become clear that other members of the ALKB family are likely involved in the demethylation of methylated adenine. There has been another study which has implicated the TET enzyme from Drosophila as a potential adenine demethylase. Earlier studies had conclusively shown that the TET enzymes oxidize methyl cytosine. Given this precedence, this study needs to be treated with caution until further evidence is presented that indeed the TET enzymes can demethylate adenine. Once the methyl marks are in place, how do they elicit their function? The suspicion is that they might work through proteins which are able to read these epigenetic modifications on DNA. One of these, known as the ASC domain, is a good candidate 
given that related domains have been implicated in recognition of methyladenine in RNA. Our study of adenine methyl transferases in eukaryotes reveals that they have been acquired on several occasions from bacterial restriction modification systems. One such transfer from bacteria appears to have happened rather early in eukaryotic evolution, resulting in the enzyme which is known as damped 1 or metal 4. In other eukaryotic lineages, such as chlorophyte algae, we find many other adenine methyl transferases which seem to have been acquired via independent transfers. Likewise, in fungi, we have uncovered adenine methyl transferases which represent yet other independent transfers. On several occasions, upon the transfer of these methylases, they appear to have taken on a new life as RNA modifying enzymes. In conclusion, we have placed our current knowledge of adenine methylation in eukaryotes onto an evolutionary scaffold.